Hello, friends of Oak Hills. This is Pastor Dale with our weekly video touchpoint. Today is Thursday, November 2nd, 2023. Return to our series titled Truth or Lies. This is part four of a multi part series introducing and interacting with Rosaria Butterfield's new book, Five Lies of Our Anti Christian Age. As followers of Christ, we must be rooted in biblical truth as we are confronted by the lies of this present darkness. The second lie that Butterfield addresses of the five lies is, being a spiritual person is kinder than being a biblical Christian. We hear this lie implicitly in yard signs or even t-shirts that call one another to be kind. This lie undergirds accusations of hate speech when one holds to a biblical view of sexuality and or marriage. Without any explicit outside standard, kindness now is the new morality that is legalistically imposed on people. Now, don't hear me or even Butterfield wrong. Kindness is biblical. Kindness is good. We ought to strive for kindness. The lie, however, touches on the difference between how one becomes kind. Butterfield writes, quote, The difference between being a spiritual person and being a biblical Christian lies in content, not emphasis, end quote. We all want to emphasize kindness. The question is, how do we become kind? The lie rejects biblical Christianity because it views the fixed moral standard of the Bible as being opposed to kindness. True biblical Christianity understands that we cannot become kind on our own. We need the saving grace of Christ. Butterfield zeroes in on the main issue when she says, I started to reflect on this most divisive issue of today within Christianity, what the Bible means and what the Bible is. All the other debates are downstream from this one, end quote. If you hold that the Bible is the inerrant, authoritative word of God, then you will submit to the truth of Scripture. If you re reject the trustworthiness of Scripture and its authority, you are left to design your own path of spirituality. Most non-Christians reject the authority of Scripture. Many Christians who may verbally accept the authority of Scripture, unfortunately, do not affirm its authority in their practice. In describing this new spirituality, Butterfield quotes theologian Peter Jones. Butterfield writes, The new unbiblical spirituality has deep roots in paganism, but also in materialism. Jones writes, Spirituality has become a do-it-yourself life hobby that blends ancient Eastern practices with modern consumer sensibilities. I would add a third ism to describe this new spirituality, humanism. Humanism celebrates and even promotes what humans can do, even believing that humans can solve all of their own problems with enough blank. Fill in the blank with whatever you one feels is lacking. Education, money, equal opportunity, government regulation, and on and on and on. Humanism says that we need to reject the outdated moral standards of the Bible in order to be kind to others. In this spirituality, kindness is the approval of another's self-perceived desires or identity. What does the Bible teach about spirituality and kindness? Butterfield uses her personal story to highlight the content of the Bible. In 1997, when she was still an unbeliever and a lesbian professor of English, her own words, she received an invitation from Pastor Ken Smith to hear a lecture on the overview of the Bible. Butterfield accepted the invitation to hear the lecture herself before she would have it presented in one of her classes. Pastor Smith told the story of the Bible with the culmination of Christ's death and resurrection. Butterfield records him saying, quote, Of all the things man thinks he needs, the Bible says his basic need is to be brought back into a right relationship with his creator, God. Without that, he is doomed and unfulfilled. 
What then does God call on us to do? Certainly, he does not tell us to be good and save ourselves. No, he calls men, women, and children, and the whole world to come to Jesus as their sacrifice for their sin. By faith in Jesus, we live in a restored relationship with God. Close quote. We hear in this the two main differences between the spirituality of the lie and biblical spirituality. First, no human can save himself or herself. The answer to our problems does not, even cannot, lie within ourselves because we are cut off from God, who is the only source of all that is good. And second, only Jesus saves us by his death on the cross. The only way to break the guilt and power of sin in our lives is the sacrificial death of Christ. Therefore, biblical spirituality affirms that kindness is a fruit of the Spirit, something we cannot do on our own apart from Christ. As you can tell, this lie cuts to the very heart of the gospel. Butterfield highlights that it springs from one's view of the Bible, what the Bible means and what the Bible is. This lie impacts many other current conversations about moral issues. The Bible will always bring us back to our need for the gospel and the power of the gospel to truly transform and produce holiness in our lives. May we never become untethered from the truth and trustworthiness of Scripture. A few highlights to touch on here this cold, brisk fall morning in November. It's a new month, and so we have a new missionary of the month. And this month, we're asking you to be thinking of and praying for Chris and Mary Granberry. They have been on our missionary list from near the beginning of our church for about 20 years now. And uh, they started Sacred Road Ministry in the Pacific Northwest. They were the first ones that caught that vision and went there, moved their family and started that ministry and have watched it grow to see a church planted, to see it expanded to a second uh, Native American reservation. Uh, their their children have grown up on the reservation, now are adult children. Many of them are married. They're, they're, Chris and Mary are becoming grandparents. And uh, things are changing in their ministry. So Chris was ordained as a as a pastor in our denomination. And he was leading that church plant there on the White Swan Reservation, the Yakima Reservation in Washington, in White Swan. And in this past year, they transitioned roles. And so Joshua, uh, I'm not even going to pronounce his last name. He is a Native American. He came to faith in the ministry and he received education training, seminary education, and has been ordained. Now, Joshua is now the pastor for this church. And Chris has been designated as an assistant pastor. And the, the reason for that is that they're looking at long term, what's next for the Granberries, what's next for Sacred Road Ministry, and uh, wanting to see this ministry outlive them. And so they're, they're working on building up the, the ministry and the systems of Sacred Road to continue to multiply, continue to grow, even to outlive Chris and Mary Granberry. I don't think they're anywhere near to retirement or walking away from the ministry, but they're just thinking ahead, planning ahead early on. Um, and so one of the things that they would like to see is the, the ministry being replicated on other reservations throughout the region up there in the Pacific Northwest. And that's what they're going to give their attention to. And so it's an exciting time for, for Sacred Road, for Chris and Mary. And uh, we encourage you to be praying for them and their ministry up in the Pacific Northwest. Here at Oak Hills next Wednesday, we are holding a very special event. We're calling it the Oak Hills Collective. Collective meaning it's for everyone in the church, whether you have children or not, whether you're married or not, uh, wherever you're at, we would love for you to join us on a Wednesday evening. So normally it's Sunday morning as the whole church gathered for worship. Uh, we would like to, to see uh, something different and something new uh, on Wednesday evenings, midweek, where we have a, a touch point together coming together, share a meal, and then even study and dig into God's Word together to be encouraged. And so we're, we're doing it one time here this fall, we're looking and planning to do it two or three times in the spring, uh, just to give this opportunity to, to see how our, our church body works together in this way. So plan to come. I'd love to have you. 
uh, we're gonna have Costco pizza. So keeping it simple for dinner, there'll be pizza for everyone. And that's gonna be made ready and available by 5.45 p.m. on Wednesday evening. So come from work, come from school activities, eat dinner with us, enjoy the just the, the fellowship round table. Then at 6.30, we're gonna come together for a couple worship songs and then split our youth and Kid360 kids and then even children younger than Kid360. So first grade and under are gonna have special activities downstairs uh, for them and for the adults. We're gonna stay together in the sanctuary and I wanna give a, a brief synopsis of the entire book, Five Lies of Our Anti-Christian Age, and then but open it up for discussion on how we can be encouraging one another. For we are all having to face these, interact with these uh, lies because they're, they're prevalent. And, and so it's a question of how can we encourage one another? How can we support one another? How can we hold true to scripture? in this climate and moving forward. So I'd love for you to be with us next Wednesday evening, dinner and uh, the study together, uh, wrapping up by 7.30 Wednesday evening. Looking ahead on Sunday, November 19th, we plan to hold our annual Thanksgiving hymn sing. We've done this each year, uh, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, opportunity for the whole church family to come together and give public thanks for all the good that the Lord has blessed us with in our lives and uh, to sing some hymns together, rich hymns and join our voices together. But this year we have a very special feature on this night. We have some missionaries that are gonna be with us that weekend and they're gonna be sharing during this Thanksgiving hymn sing uh, gathering. So Solti and Karen Vishki, they are from Cluj, Romania. Solti, as his name might sound, is Romanian. Uh, he grew up there, and Karen is a missionary with Surge uh, Missions Organization, and they've been married, and they are both serving the, the ministry efforts in Cluj, Romania. If you're familiar with that name, it's because you know Oak Hill supports Chase and Shaw Johnson, who have been serving in Cluj, Romania for over 20 years now with Surge, and Solt Schulte and Karen Vischke are part of their ministry team there in Cluj, and so we get a, an opportunity to visit it with them, hear about their ministry, uh, hear an update about the Johnsons themselves, and and uh, pray for them as part of our Thanksgiving hymn sing. We'll have dessert available. It's just a, a, a warm, intimate church family night on Sunday, November 19th, 6 p.m. at the church. And then one last thing here for this month of November, as we've done the last several years, we are collecting shoebox gifts for Sacred Grove Ministry in the Pacific Northwest. Just that we want to have this ongoing relationship and partnership and supporting the ministry outreach. And so our shoebox gifts will go to Warm Springs. That's where our teams go every summer for a missions trip. We are working with uh, the, the, the missions team there and uh, supporting them. And so they will take these shoebox gifts and bring them to the kids clubs, to kids that we have ministered with and interacted with on our summer teams and use them as a bridge to share the hope of Christmas with kids on the reservation of Warm Springs. And so there's information in our bulletins at church and the touch point about how to fill a shoebox. We are collecting them and want to receive them by November 19th, that Sunday, November 19th, so that we can package them up and ship them uh, out there in time for them for their, their Christmas parties in December. So, and uh, Sunday morning, Pastor John is going to be preaching and he's wrapping up his series on Ecclesiastes, finishing us up in chapter 12. And, and Woody Jeffrey has just started a new uh, adult Christian education class on the atonement. It's a, a rich time at 930. So I hope you're able to join us Sunday morning. Thanks for joining me today for our touch point. Look forward to being with you soon. <music>